first step in the mid-sheath entry process is to identify the specified length required for the selected splice closure. An overall length of 72 inches will be used for this demonstration. First, bring the two sides of the cable together and form a loop. Visually locate the reverse oscillation point closest to the center of the cable. If the oscillation point is close to the center, slightly adjust the loop to place the oscillation in the middle. This position is ideal but not required. Note, the reverse oscillation is where the buffer tubes change direction periodically throughout the cable in order to make mid-sheath entry possible. Mark the center of the loop with the paint marker. From the center mark, measure out 36 inches on each side of the cable jacket. Place two additional identification marks on the jacket surface at the measured locations. Before scoring the jacket surface, be sure to check or set the length of your blade in order to prevent accidental damage to the buffer tube. Place and score the jacket surface at each of the two 36-inch pre-measured locations. From the paint mark at the center of the loop, measure and mark the cable jacket at approximately 4 inches in each direction. This location will become a mid-sheath window, which will allow the buffer tubes to be accessed. Using the cable ring cutter, score the jacket surface at each of the 4-inch locations. Slightly bend the outer jacket at each of the ring cut locations. This process will separate the jacket and allow the rip cord locations to be visually identified. Place the razor knife on the 8 inch portion of the jacket surface. Be sure that the rip cords under the jacket are located 90 degrees away from the scoring location. Carefully score the 8-inch surface of the jacket without penetrating completely through the material. After the surface has been scored, remove and store the cut-resistant glove. Place both hands within the 8-inch section of cable and slightly twist the outer jacket back and forth in order to open the jacket surface. At the ring cut location, Grip the jacket's edge with a pair of needle nose pliers and remove the 8 inch portion from the remaining cable. The jacket ripcord should now be visible on each side of the cable. With the use of the scissors, cut each ripcord directly in the center of the 8 inch window. Pull each of the ripcord sections to the original 36 inch ring cut locations on each side of the entry window. As a good practice, Leave approximately 4 inches of ripcord available until the prepping process is finished. Begin by removing the outer jacket on each side of the 36 inch center mark. Carefully cut each binder at the multiple locations. and remove them from the buffer tube surface. Use the scissors to cut off any excess binder material at the ring cut location. Begin this step by locating the reverse oscillation located nearest to the center point of the loop. Note, the reverse oscillation is where the buffer tubes change direction periodically throughout the cable in order to make mid-sheath entry possible. Unwind the buffer tubes at the reverse oscillation point only. 
using a pair of diagonal cutting pliers, cut both the water blocking thread and FRP rod in the center of the opening. From this point, walk out the FRP rod from within the buffer tubes. Cut the FRP rod throughout this process as needed. Be sure to place the buffer tubes back into their original orientation throughout the removal process. Cut and remove the entire FRP rod except for approximately 4 inches on each side to secure the cable within the closure. Separate out the buffer tubes that will be entering the splice tray. Place a small 2-inch piece of electrical tape at an angle over each of the oscillation points within the remaining buffer tube bundle. Note, the taping process will help to fold the remaining buffer tubes into the splice closure. Flip and fold the remaining buffer tubes into a loop. In order to help hold the buffer tubes in place, a small piece of Velcro can be used during the process. Place a mark on each side of the buffer tube where the fibers will enter the splice tray. The length between the two marks will become the buffer tube access point. Review your slitting tool size requirements and setting guidelines prior to performing the slitting process. Note, the Jonard MS6 optical fiber slitting tool will be used for this procedure. When using the Jonard slitting tool, first identify the specified slot and direction needed to properly perform the slitting process. This information can be found on the top cover of the tool, which not only shows the buffer tube diameter ranges, but also the proper pulling direction and is indicated with an arrow. For this demonstration, a 2.3 mm 24 fiber buffer tube is being used. This diameter falls between the 2.1 mm and 2.5 mm range, as indicated on the tool's cover. To perform the slitting process, open the tool and place it over the buffer tube in the correct pulling direction. Select the required slot and align the blades with the length mark on the buffer tube. Close and lock the tool in place. Slowly pull the slitter around the buffer tube with as few stopping points as possible. Once the slitter has reached the indicated mark, open and remove the tool from around the buffer tube. Now that the slitting process has been performed, separate the two sides of the buffer tube from each other while taking care not to damage the optical fibers. When the two length indication marks are reached, a buffer tube ring cutter or scissors can be used to individually remove each side of the buffer tube jacket. Once the buffer tube removal process is complete, leave the protective gel on the fiber surface to help with the binder separation process. The outside plant 144 microcore cable consists of two groups of fibers. The first fiber group contains fibers 1 through 12, which can be identified by the blue binder around them. The second fiber group contains fibers 13 through 24, which have no binder. In order to separate the two groups of fibers, you will need to locate the binder group inside the bundle. To perform this task, an approved fiber cleaning solution should be used to clean approximately 4 to 6 inches of all 24 fibers closest to the buffer tube. This method will expose and separate the binders for easy access. Locate both binders and slightly tug on them until you can separate each group of fibers. Once the groups have been identified, count the number of fibers in each group and identify the color code before separating the entire length. Separate the blue binder group and cut the binder back to approximately 10 inches on each side. 
With the binders, perform a half hitch loop around the fiber group approximately six times to identify the group. Make sure not to pull the binder loops too tightly. Repeat the half hitch method on each side of the fiber group. Remove the remaining binders from within the fiber grouping. Clean the fibers with an approved fiber cleaning solution. Use a Kim wipe to ensure that the fibers are dry and free of debris before installing them into the splice tray.